Welcome back to Adobe Photoshop CC. In this tutorial, we're going to discover how to sharpen our image. Now, one thing that's very critical, very important to understand about sharpening is you can't take a really like blurry photo and sharpen it. It doesn't quite really work that way. The sharpen technology, the way it works, it sort of creates uh, sharpness around edges of detail between the high lights and the and the darkness, the uh, the shadows. So um, Basically, if you try and sharpen a blurry photo, it's still going to be blurry. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. So what we want to do is we actually want to make a composite of this image, because right now I have these adjustment layers I did in the previous tutorials. So I'm going to share this quick little shortcut for you. It's Control Shift Option E, or, sorry, Control Shift Alt E, or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. So that's for a PC or Mac, and you get essentially a merged duplicate copy. It's sort of a unique little hotkey to realize. Again, that's Control Shift Alt E on the PC, or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. And then if I hold Alt or Option on the eyeball, I can remove it, and I have this flattened image. I kind of want to work with the flattened image, and I actually want to convert this to a smart object to protect it. So I'm just going to right-click in here and go to Convert to Smart Object. And then again, smart objects, the way they work, they're like protective envelopes for the image. So now I'm going to apply a smart filter by going to the filter menu, go down to sharpen, and the one we're going to explore is the oldest and truest of the sharpen filters, which is the unsharp mask. These other ones, I have to say, the sharp, sharpen edges, sharpen more, the ones that don't have the dot, dot, dot extension, these three are basically uh, singular function sharpens. You basically click on it, and it just sharpens it and that's it like if I click on sharpen edges it does it in one swoop and I have no control over that so I'm going to undo that by hitting control Z or command Z uh, instead we're going to go to the, the cooler sharpen filter so we're going to go to filter go down to sharpen and choose that unsharp mask it does have a peculiar name the masking quality is, is the thing that a lot of people are get held up on now, the way this works, you basically can click anywhere in the image to show a preview. Um, you can uh, you can move around inside the little preview too, once you click in there, okay? So I'm gonna click right about here, I think, would look good. Now, these values here, what, what represents is the first, let's go and reduce all three of these. Uh, the first one has to do with how much sharpening detail essentially you want. So if you have it maxed up all the way 100%, you're gonna max out the sharpness uh, at 500%, which is crazy amount of sharpness. I mean, it's way too much. But what it'll do is it'll give you uh, the most extreme sharpness, and then later on we can show you how to reduce it. Now the radius here it controls the distance between the sharpness, the the sort of thickness of the lines between the dark and the light. So as as you can see, as I max this up, you're going to get some very crazy effects if you go all the way up. So typically with a radius, you want to have it very low number. So like maybe one, two, or three. Uh, typically, you know, I have it around like one to two at the most in terms of the radius. I'll leave it at two here. The threshold, what that controls is uh, noise in the image. So if you have some really drastic sort of uh, artifacts here you can smooth out the noise by increasing the threshold so like right around here you got quite a bit of noise now you don't want to take it too far probably like when the 30 to 40 range will be good uh, I think I'm going to reduce mine around maybe 30 here and I'm going to go ahead and click OK to apply now uh, let's zoom in on this we can see what's going on here and I'll turn off the smart filter and you can see before and after how much it just it gives it that weird almost like embossing kind of quality it like thickens everything up now it's way too much here this overcompensation of the sharpening effect that's why we have the blend modes in the the sharp filter so if you double click or on this little widget here at the end here you get the options for the blending of uh, the uh, unsharp mask the first thing you want to explore is the blend modes and you can definitely have fun kind of playing around with these but typically with these kind of filters you get these light artifacts and they cause interesting color effects 
And to remove them, you choose luminosity blend mode, the very last one at the bottom there. And that typically removes that. All right. And then uh, the next thing you want to do is explore how much of that sharpness do you want. So that's where you drop back on the opacity. So probably like 30, 35 percent will be good. Maybe as much as 40. I'll go up a 40 here and then click OK. That looks pretty good to my eye. If I remove it and add it. Now the sharpening is really great for when you make really nice prints. Uh, you can sharpen for the web too, but typically it is more done for, for the prints. But overall, uh, you know, you can explore a lot and have lots of fun with the sharpen filters. The unsharp mask is the first one, the truest one to start with. And again, it just has those three features. And it is now a parametric adjustment because we have applied it to a smart filter, I mean a, a smart object. So if I double click on the smart mask, unsharp mask, I have those options. So here's the 5%, the 2 for the radius, and the threshold of 3. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. And uh, let's go ahead and maximize our scene by hitting the F key a couple times. And I'll hit uh, Control-0 just to zoom in. With this kind of image, you kind of want to be zoomed in to see all the detail. Uh, and this looks really great. So until next time, see you soon in Adobe Photoshop CC. Cheers.